Hey, Scott and Jeff here. Hey, you want to be happy? How about upholding the law? Let's yeah. talk about it. Don't get arrested. Hey, it's Scott and Jeff, and we're here to talk about being happy, how to be happy. And one of our ups, of the seven ups of happiness, is uphold the law. Well, technically speaking, it's not one of the seven ups. It's one of the million ups that yeah. fall under the umbrella of the seven ups. But it's part of the on the up and up, up. Of the ups. Of the ups. <laughs> uphold the law. Yeah. So we thought it would be appropriate if we did our episode today out here in front of uh, Sandy City, Utah, uh, Justice Courts, the Hall of Justice, the Justice League. I think everyone has had an opportunity to roam the halls of a justice building like this, whether you're, you know, just renewing your driver's license or maybe reporting because of something you did uh, while you were driving. I don't know. It's, it's, well, it the last again. time I did anything at a justice hall that had to do with driving, it was definitely paying fines yeah. or thinking about fighting them in court, even though I knew that I was, in fact, speeding. So if you really want to be happy, our, our, our thesis today is have a good, clear conscience, and that's possible by just keeping the law. Yeah, I, and, it, and it's not just the law, right? I mean, this kind of runs into all sorts of business uh, you know, issues. For example, uh, you know, I'm filling out my expense report at my nine to five job on this trip, and I think I'm just gonna put this meal a little bit more than it actually was, or, you know, things like that. You just gotta- Little business you know, ethics, sleep. I can't yeah. Sleep, uh, well, but it's... even that probably is against the law. I mean, I'm sure there must be some sort of embezzlement issue yeah. that we could concoct yeah, or, yeah. or something along those lines. When I was a little boy, uh, 11, 12, 13 years old, I was raised in a fairly poor environment, raised by a wonderful single mother, but never had enough money for the four kids to do the things that we wanted to do. We always had everything we needed. And uh, I took up stealing frequently, everything, everywhere, uh, not just shoplifting, um, but also eventually turned into burglary and, you know, breaking and entering and taking things from people that lived in our, in our neighborhood. Uh, you need a hug. No, no, no. I would think that they would at yeah. this juncture. Um, but, you know, just a lot of really stupid things. If it was there and no one was tending it, I probably would steal it. And my friends were also in that same boat. We, I at least, never slept at night. You're always uh, looking over your shoulder. Even as a 12-year-old, everywhere you go, every store I went into, even after I was caught and arrested and my life changed, yeah. every time that even now, 40 years later, when I go into a store, I swear people are looking at me. I'm always checking to see if there's monitors or some two-way mirror. I always feel suspicious, even though I'm actually paying for things. It's a, it's a scar that never yeah. goes away, and I regret every second of it. So my thing was uh, vandalism, but not the kind of vandalism that you typically would think. I mean, it all kind of started with me with, hey, we're going to go out at 2 in the morning and toilet paper some houses, right? Well, Big that's deal, just right? fun. But then it turned into, let's also get a carton of eggs. Ooh. And we're going to egg some houses. Yeah. And we got caught, you know, we got caught and I had to go clean it off. And uh, it was just, it was a horrible feeling and embarrassing. Was... Well, in this day and age, too, you know, homeowners and the pride of their homes. Yeah, egging is not only illegal and, and vandalism, but it's just rude. And yeah. you know, the stink, the smell, yeah. it takes so long to get that off of your house. <laughs> there's, no, there's no limit to, the, to, the, to our imagination of ways that we can figure out how. He's still getting over. It's that egg stink, huh, isn't it? Don't use that. <laughs> but just in day to day, just out in traffic, just, you know, if you keep the law, if you, you know, and most police will give you a five to six mile per hour yeah. little cushion yeah. that you can use uh, to go over the speed limit as long as it's safe mm -hmm. and everyone else is sort of, you know, driving along with you at that speed. In fact, that's the one thing that I learned from traffic school that I had to go to for breaking the law is that there is a, um, there's a statistically acceptable speed that they will let you allow to get away. I can't remember what they call it, but it's like the 85-15 rule or something. And it basically says 85% of the people will go a speed that is comfortable and safe. And it doesn't matter what's posted. And the other 15 will either go the exact speed or they'll go, you know, insane. And you see what that means in Utah, for you Utah drivers, is that 85-15 means that in a 70 mile per hour zone, you can go 85 or higher. 
uh, and that those that use the hub lane are usually going 15 miles an hour. That's what that I'm means. not sure if that's the exact interpretation of, of the 8515 rule, but basically the police are saying, you know, if you're within that, that group, that 85% of the people would go your speed, I'm not going to pull you over. Yeah. But if you are an outlier on either end, I'm probably going to... Anyway, it's not about speeding. It could be about anything. Yeah, it could be about a lot of stuff. Uh, no, just real quick. Um, you know, you know, the hard you, thing for me... Sorry, Scott. The hard, no, the hard thing for me is, you know, there's so much media out there, whether it's TV shows or movies, that glorify breaking the law. So you see this movie and these people come off as being so cool when, in fact, they're miserable they have human to be, beings. If they survive. Well, I mean, the one thing that kept me out of uh, a life of crime was just the very thought of having to go to jail. Yeah. I mean, how, how do you, you, I don't care how many movies are out there that make it look cool. They, they all come away with like a cautionary tale. You don't want to be here. Yeah. And I mean, that's fairly obvious stuff. Do you remember but, the first time you watched Scared Straight? Remember years ago? Oh my goodness. Oh. Scared Straight. What a fantastic Crazy. documentary. Crazy. And it really did. I think it worked for the people that were watching it as well as the kids that were in the program. All right, top three crime-based, kind of crime doesn't pay or crime is glorified movies. So my number three is A Bronx Tale. Robert De Niro. Uh, nice. And, and he's got the, the one son that is trying to decide whether he not to be, want to be a criminal and follow the criminals or be true to his dad. Ah. Oh. Just, I don't think I ever saw it. It's a good movie. I, I didn't. Mean, De Niro, all right? I mean, it's, it's when he was actually doing really good stuff. Well, he still does good stuff. Uh, let's see. Uh, my top, my third of the top three, I've got uh, Bonnie and Clyde. It's yeah. pretty hard to be happy when you're riddled with bullets. Yeah. Uh, and your innards are spilling out all over the floor of that fabulous car that they had. It's, yeah. difficult. it's difficult to come away from watching that movie and going, yeah, crime pays. Yeah. Number two. It did for Warren Beatty and Faye Dunaway, though. Well, for their careers, for career, sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, number two for me is Goodfellas. Goodfellas, uh, I mean, yeah, I, I, I like the Godfather movies, yeah. but holy cow, Goodfellas was just so, yeah. so uh, Very true gritty. Because I know mafia. Yeah, yeah, I know you do. Yeah, I was going to say. Yeah. <laughs> he's, he's plugged in. Oh, yeah. I, could, I, I did Dog Day Afternoon. You know, kind of a, a tragic comedy yeah. with Al Pacino. And he's sort of freaking out there, and uh, it's a good show, but it's uh, it's yeah, crime doesn't pay. Yeah. Don't do it. Stop. So the it. number one for me, as far as like I was talking about earlier, is the glorification yet the misery is Heat, with Al Pacino and Robert De Niro. There, uh, so Pacino is the cop, and he's trying to catch De Niro, the bank robber, and it's just, oh, it's got Val Kilmer in it, you know, and it's. It's just, yeah. I, all these all these are all R-rated movies that I've chosen not to see. Sure, and I watched them on uh, VidAngel. Oh. A plug for my friends over there. Uh, oh, so they were cleaned up? Sure, as far as you know. <laughs> for a fee, you can clean up R-rated movies and thus sleep better at night. Yes, that'll make you happy. Uh, my number one, I just had I had way too many, but I did I did go with The Godfather. I, I Or Once Upon a Time in America. Oh, yeah. uh, both Robert De Niro-ish movies, uh, particularly Once Upon a Time in America but also very gritty. And uh, I think those types of movies, seeing them as a younger boy, even though it didn't totally convince me to not be a crook for a while there, uh, I got the idea. Um, and then The Outsiders. Oh, uh, yeah. You know, oh. just good good gang yeah. flick. You know, it glorifies the family as the gang, but still, yeah. Yeah. it was a cautionary tale and there was some tragedy there. But anyway, so uh, to sum it up, if you want to be happy, you want to sleep peacefully at night, and get up the next morning and not look over your shoulder constantly. Don't toilet paper. Don't toilet paper. Don't egg. And for heaven's sakes, uphold the law. Or as they say in other countries, uphold the lore. What country do they say that in? Uh, I think it's in Washington, <laughs> I think it's like Australia. Yeah. <laughs> no, maybe it's Kennedy country. Uphold the lore. I don't know. Yeah, so you can chat Uphold the lore. Hey. Uphold the lore. No, I think it's British. Ah, whatever. Hey, thanks for joining us. We hope this was uh, helpful in some way. I mean, everybody wants to be happy, and if you've never had a brush with the law, consider yourself unbelievably fortunate and just learn from other people's mistakes. That's another good way to be happy. We'll see you here next time.